Recently, I've been completely obsessed with fighting games, and it's because of Tetris. We're going to be talking about all that and more, but first, caffeine. The thing is, this kettle actually boils faster than all my other kettles, so actually, it gives me a little less time to speak. Today's video is all about my descent into the world of fighting games, but it actually all started with this, Puyo Puyo versus Tetris. So really, actually, Nintendo Switch is the console that got me back into fighting games, and not just back into fighting games, but pretty much obsessed with, with fighting games right now. That doesn't mean I'm, you know, high up on the rankings or the leaderboards, but essentially, it's all I can think about. I literally bring this GPD pocket on the train with me so that I can play Steam fighting games on the train with something like a, a DualShock 4. Wait, I completely forgot. I was, I was so excited to talk about Tetris that I completely forgot to talk about today's coffee. Today's coffee is from Peru. It's called the Edu Parugo Mountain. I don't know how to actually pronounce it in its correct term, but it's from Peru. And let's go ahead and grind the beans before I forget what I was talking about. In go the beans. El Palgo Mountain. I don't know how to pronounce it. This is more than just how did Tetris get me into fighting games, but it's more about how did Tetris get me back into gaming in general. But before we start talking about that, let's grind. Really, I was at this point around March when I was starting to think to myself, you know, I don't even really want to play a lot of the games that I have. I own a lot of consoles, PS4, PS3, Wii U, PS Vita, 3DS, I have a number of 2DS consoles, PCs, all sorts of stuff. I would like sit down to play games and I'd be like, I have nothing to play, which is the first world gamers issue. Right? It's just eternally, I have nothing to play, even though I have hundreds of things to play. And I was trying to figure out like, why, why have I become, I mean, Nihongo Gamer, this is a channel presumably about video games. And I don't even want to play games anymore, and I was really worried about this because Switch was coming out and I was excited about the hardware, but I wasn't 100% sure what it was that I actually wanted to play on Switch. And also, there was no promise of Monster Hunter at the time, we didn't have that confirmed. I was getting a little bored of the 3DS, you know, Vita has already slowed down for the past year or two. I was really wondering, like, what am I going to do about this fact that I'm, I'm like, not that into games anymore, and yet I have this video games channel. So anyway, Switch rolls down, rolls down, rolls around, and I'm trying to think to myself, what am I going to play on the Switch first? And I realized that Puyo Puyo vs Tetris, I don't know if it came out a week later or if it was a launch game, but I was like, that looks like an essential title for me. I have to buy Puyo Puyo vs Tetris, and I have to buy it digital. So this is actually going to branch off in two directions. The first direction is, it brought me towards fighting games, it also brought me towards digital downloads only, because the only cartridges I own right now are Dragon Ball Xenoverse, because I plan on selling this, because I don't actually... Even though it's, it's, it's like fun, but it's like not a game that I have time to dedicate to. But even like Zelda, I bought that, I bought that on cartridge thinking I'll play it and then I'll just sell it. But games like Puyo Puyo vs Tetris, even though I wasn't really into Puyo Puyo, I love Tetris and have done for decades. Wow, these beans just never finish grinding. So Puyo Puyo vs Tetris is the first game that I bought like, you know, full price digital game. I'm used to only spending like one or two dollars on app games because they're digital and so I'm like, okay, one or two dollars, that's fair. So to spend fifty dollars is kind of a weird thing for me to spend on a, on a digital game. And so Switch finally comes out and I buy Puyo Puyo vs Tetris on the Switch and it's my first foray into a digital only library. I like the idea of always having it on me. I don't want to discover that I have the Zelda cartridge in here when actually I really wanted to play Tetris because the game that I will always default to when I'm not sure what I want to do or be because basically I'm idle not because I want to play a game but I just have some time free and I want to enjoy myself I will go down to Tetris so I buy Tetris and it's Puyo Puyo versus Tetris so I'm like okay I'll try out this Puyo Puyo thing and I start to become obsessed with this whole chain mechanic it really bugs me that I can't make chains in Puyo Puyo hold on the water is done Alright, so where was I? The obsession with Puyo Puyo versus Tetris begins, and it's basically because I've discovered that there's a combo system, and it's not something that you can just casually do. You actually have to do the tutorials and learn how to make combos in Puyo Puyo versus Tetris. Or it's, otherwise, it's essentially kind of pointless. You can't just kind of fumble your way through Puyo Puyo. You have to kind of learn 
how it works so that you can actually competitively play. Because once you go online, once you play against a friend who has a vague idea of how the combo system works, you're essentially unable to compete at all if you don't understand how to make combos. And if you're on the Tetris side, you have to learn things like T-spins and all of the mechanisms. Once I did learn a little bit about it, I became absolutely hooked on the combo system, on the Tetris T spin system, and for the first time I started playing games competitively online. So I would go online and play against other Tetris players, against other Puyo Puyo players, and the fact that you you have a ranking, you could see that your, your ranking, the number goes up or it goes down, you can also play casual matches, and you can also see that people are talking about it online, and the fact that there's community about it, I found that unbelievably exciting because it's not something that I've really experienced before. As you know on my channel, I mostly stick with RPGs and one player experiences. So this is quite exciting and new for me to be <laughs> playing puzzle games online. So Puyo Puyo vs Tetris, that's what's really getting me into the competitive scene. And then finally Street Fighter 2 arrives on the Nintendo Switch. So I go ahead and I buy Street Fighter 2 because essentially I haven't played Street Fighter for a long time, but I loved Street Fighter Alpha 2 and Street Fighter Alpha 3. I didn't really get into Street Fighter 4, but I, I've, I've always played, you know, games like KOF. And so you saw earlier in this year, I moved into a new video game series where I would like play fighting games. I had a little series, which I didn't really finish, called, you know, Let's Learn KOF. I was like, I'm gonna start getting better at KOF. And all of that came because Street Fighter 2 got me back into fighting games on the Switch. Now unfortunately, there's not a lot of other fighting games on the Switch apart from all the old classics, so I have like King of Fighters 98, King of Fighters 99, things like Art of Fighting, Fatal Fury, these are all classic fighting games, but Street Fighter 2 really got me back into fighting games on in general, and it was because of the Switch. So really, Switch started with Puyo Puyo vs Tetris, but then <laughs> the fact that I enjoyed this competitive thing, and also learning how to do combos, because I never really knew how to do combos. I could always do, at most, a three-hit combo. So the obsession started to grow with the combo system, not just in puzzle games, but also in Street Fighter. And as I started to learn how to do combos on Street Fighter, I started wondering, if th is there like a more modern version of Street Fighter, the 3D ones, that I can play on the Switch? And on Unfortunately, there still isn't. You still have to go to PC, PS4, or PS3 if you want to play games like Street Fighter 4, or Street Fighter 5, or King of Fighters, you know, 14. Turn this back up. This is my new t-shirt. It says Street Fighter 5 Shoryuken to Tournament. This was actually the match that they, it was the exhibition match that they did at Tokyo Game Show. All right, let's take the coffee filter off. Pour myself some delicious Peru. Ezu, Ezu, Edu Parugo Mountain. Oh man, I can smell it already. Brown caffeinated sludge. So excited. Oh. The main difference I find with coffee that you grind yourself, and not just that you grind it yourself, but with coffee that's single origin and also quite fresh, is that it has a time decay. It's like there's that initial kind of, it's hot, and I can't really taste it, but then it kind of envelops like this, and you like experience the flavor like blossoming out of the drink and onto your tongue, and then kind of dissipating. I'm pretty sure there's more to it than just caffeine. I don't actually know, maybe I'm just addicted. So this is it, Ultra Street Fighter 2, which was released on the Nintendo Switch, and although I would like to have had Street Fighter 4 or Street Fighter 5 on here, I was, I was like, you know, well, well, this is the fighting game I've got on here, I'm going to really do my best to learn how to actually do combos in this game. And it's tough, it's actually tougher, I think, to do combos in a game like this than it is on some of the more modern Street Fighters. But it's really down to Switch, I really owe it all to Switch to getting me back into Street Fighter in general. So of course I reached this point where I'm like, you know, I want to play Street Fighter 5 and I want to play King of Fighters, so I buy them on PS4, and I'm playing them, <laughs> not with the DualShock actually, hold on a second, where's my actual... Where's my other arcade stick? Okay, so I've, I've got it. This is my Hori Fighting Stick Mini, and I actually bought this like a year ago when I bought King of Fighters 14 originally, before they had the graphics update on PS4. It's actually a really great little stick. The only thing is that when you're holding it on your lap, the whole stick moves around. Like you move right and the whole stick kind of shakes and it changes the angle at which the buttons are, or changes the placement, and you need to know, like, the buttons, ideally you don't want your buttons to move around, because if they move and you, you go for, like, the low kick and it's actually in a different place and you hit medium kick, 
well it's game over basically. You don't have to play fighting games with a fight stick, obviously a lot of pro players, basically some of the best players on earth right now play with a dual shot. But that's a different conversation. So I go back to my PS4 and I'm like, hey, I already own King of Fighters 14. I bought Street Fighter 5 a year ago and a half, a year and a half ago, but I didn't like it, so I sold it. But I want to get back into it, so I was like, if I'm gonna buy it again, may as well buy it on my PC, because I had just bought the Alienware. You'll remember there was a video when I bought this Alienware laptop, and okay, a lot of people are gonna say, hey, you could have bought a more powerful PC, and that's true, but because I'm able to bring this to work and I can also play games at work, not just for fun, but because we actually make videos at work, I thought, hey, it would be nice to have a machine that I can actually bring to work. Essentially what I want to say is that, yes, I started playing on this again, Again because I had it already but it was moving around too much and that's when I made the video where I bought this arcade stick this is the Hori this is the Hori RAP it doesn't actually say it's the V style but because of the button layout you can see that it's probably an RAP V I'm not really 100% sure and once I bought this it completely changed the game I was like able to actually learn combos without having to fight against my arcade stick I could actually just use the arcade stick and just fight against the game Ah. <sighs> It's a roundabout way of saying it, but essentially, because I bought Street Fighter V and King of Fighters XIV and Guilty Gear XR and Tekken 7, and because I bought them all on my PC, it's been very convenient to have all of my games in one place. And I know that PC users have been saying this for a long time, but not all the console games I wanted were on PC. Only in the past few years recently have we been seeing a lot of Steam releases for a lot of games that are coming out on console, and I think it's because PS4, it's just much easier to develop a game for PS4 and then also launch it on Steam because the architecture is very similar. It's basically a supercharged PC, as Mark Cherney likes to call it. Also another conversation for another time. What I'm trying to say is that yes, it has been very convenient to have all my games on Steam because it means I can buy a little mini PC like this and still have all of the same games on it. Obviously it won't run quite as quickly on a small PC like this, it has its limitations, but what this boils down to is that I thought I don't enjoy games anymore. I thought I didn't need to play games. As a kid, for pretty much my entire young adult life, there were, I always wanted to go home and play games. I was excited about them. But now I've reached a certain point where my just time constraints are so tight that I don't always immediately think I want to play games. In fact, I sometimes sit in front of the PlayStation and I go, I don't know what to do with myself. But because of fighting games, because of stuff like Street Fighter, because of having this tool that you have to learn, it has given me something to get good at. And I don't like to use the term good a lot, but it has got me you know, into the mindset of improving, bettering myself, becoming more proficient at doing something, seeing something that's possible and then not stopping until, it, until I'm able to do it. That's essentially what I think is so great about fighting games, and I think a lot of people will talk about fighting games in this way as well, is that it gives you something very clear. You can see other people can do it. And once I see that someone else can do something, I instantly want to know, one, how they did it, and two, I want to see whether I can do it too. So it happened with yo-yoing, it happened with guitar, it happened with drawing, it happened with all of the things that I have as hobbies. Once I see that it's possible, I want to know whether I can do it too. And with fighting games, it has rekindled that interest in gaming, because there are two ways to think about gaming when you think about it. There's play, which is like, you know, puppies play fight. They're just play fighting because they want to see how far they can bite their, their brother until it really hurts. That was a really weird analogy, but essentially, uh, the guy who made My Katamari Damashi, whatever the game is called, he actually said at a talk at BAFTA once, he was saying, gaming comes down to play. You want to be able to experiment, try things out, see what happens. With fighting games, there is that element of it, but there's also that element of goals and achieving those goals. And you can set those goals yourself, like maybe it's to learn how to combo, maybe it's to increase your rank, maybe it's to be able to beat everyone you know, or maybe it's to join your fighting game community and so just make a lot of friends or something. It doesn't really matter what your goal is, the point is I saw that in fighting games there was a very clear place that I could be and where I was, and I knew what I needed to do to get there. That doesn't mean it was easy to get there, it's just it was clear to me what I needed to do. And so really fighting games, Street Fighter, 
King of Fighters, Guilty Gear, Tekken. These games are basically the reason why I am still playing games right now because I was reaching, I had reached a point. Can you imagine it? I run a video games channel and I reached the point where I was like, I don't even know if I want to play games anymore. But because of fighting games, it has, I can now see why I still need games in my life. I will still play other games because, because enjoying fighting games now has rekindled my interest in other genres of games as well. But right now, what I'm really excited about and really enjoying right now is this, Shoryuken, Rising Dragon Fist. This may actually be one of the most important videos that I've actually made on this channel and it's because it goes the deepest I've ever gone into kind of the psyche, what's going on in the mind of Nihongo Gamer. Because it's not really about games when you think about it, it's about seeing something that can be done and not stopping until you make it possible, like, for yourself. Like, I see that people are good at yo-yoing, I want to become good at yo-yoing, and then I either succeed in some way or I fail in some way. I see that people can get good at fighting games, at reading other players, predicting movements, or just technically being good at execution, whatever it is. I have now rediscovered my in, my step back into gaming, which was fighting games, which unfortunately for the channel, because essentially if I stopped enjoying games, this, ch this channel would either disappear or I would have to rename it. This channel has kind of got new life breathing into it thanks to fighting games. That doesn't mean all the content's gonna be about fighting games, it's just what I'm most into right now. I will still make content about, you know, figures, Japanese culture, whatever it is, I can... So I just happen to have this on 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 the table here. Here's the other one that I'm really proud of, but I, I did damage it. Love this figure so much, but clearly not enough to take care of it. So to finish things off, what I really want to say is thank you, Puyo Puyo versus Tetris. You rekindled my interest in combos, competitive play, competitive play online, and then fighting games, which essentially just rekindled my interest in gaming in general. And that is probably why this channel has got a long life ahead of it still, where if I had not discovered Puyo Puyo vs Tetris, I may well have already given up. People just saying that they enjoy the videos or, you know, what it is they like about the videos, giving me feedback, that stuff is really, really important too. So. This is a really good time for me. This is the most positive I think I've ever felt about the channel in general, because although I've not always known what the direction for this channel was, now that I know why I play games, now I know why I got back into games and I know what I want out of it, it's just so much clearer to me and so much easier for me to enjoy my time doing it. I've always enjoyed doing it, but now I feel like I enjoy it even more. Anyway, I could go on for the next one million years talking about how much I enjoy games, and fighting games, and Street Fighter, basically. Have you got a game genre that you happen to like more than other games? Right now for me it's fighting games, but I'm getting back into RPGs and all sorts of other genres as well. Do let me know in the comments if there's something that you know is what, like, the reason why you play games, or the reason you got into games, or the reason you got back into games. Do let me know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I would love for you to subscribe to the channel because I just like to see the subscriber number going up. I'm always trying to make as entertaining content as possible, always trying to find new excuses to consume caffeine, and uh, I will see you in the next Nihongo Gamer video.